Welcome back everyone, this is the VG Pierce. I'll be coming at you with Season 11 action from the Cabal Vision Champions Cup Playoffs where we are going to continue round 2 coverage. In the last bit we saw the Underworld team take out the Camry team and unfortunately due to some circumstances, lots of armor broken there. Throw team a touchdown at the end of the first half was the absolute difference here and was able to take advantage of the numbers in the second half and was able to win it by the end. And next up here, the last season's Champions Cup winner, Diam Lord, piloting the Halfling team to gonna be taking on Horny Crickets, Necromantine, Necrolicus. And let's see how that is gonna be working out in the match here. So Halfling team again going fairly deep into the playoffs. Can it happen? We'll see right here but in my preliminary prediction I just said that I like the necromantic team winning today's match because halflings they're going to definitely be up against the here against this big necromantic team but halflings though loads of weapons you just never know which direction they're gonna come at you you can be darn sure though that they're gonna have a couple of star players halfling team coached by Time Lord Adam Baje. And he will have Deep Root Strong Branch. And it appears, yes, it will be the big man himself, Morgan Thorg. Playing against Coach Horny Cricket. Going to be piloting the Necromancy team, Necrolicus. And he is going to be awaiting the coin toss, my friends. As we continue on here, first prize, 500 euros. Second prize, 250 euros. Third and fourth place is going to be granted 100 euros to drown their sorrows in. All brought to you by Cyanide Focus Home Entertainment. And now with the coin toss, it looks like the Nicolicus will be opting to receive the ball. So let's go ahead and put them on the bottom of the screen as we are going to just quickly cover both of the people on the pitch. Nuffle Alter is going to be on the pitch and that's going to be really great here for this halfling team because it makes Morgan Dog a whole lot more affordable along with Deep Root Strong Branch and be able to get that Halfling Chef and be able to look like he's got the Wizard on his side as well. So again, loads, loads of weapons to watch out for. Halfling team does have sports. The plus one in movement allows tree along with the guard tree. He does have deep root strong bands. Don't forget though, the biggest difference is he's got seven strengths instead of six and does have that block ability with the stand firm. So definitely a bigger tree than the other guys. Morgan Thorg, and this is another good thing here to take as the halfling team. Not only has got the six strength with the ten armor value break, not armor value break, but the armor value. But he also has the block, the mighty blow, and he's also got that throw teammate. So Morgan Thorg can also throw the right stuff, halflings. If you're not looking, it's not just limited to those trees on the pit. So watch out for that sidestep halfling right there. And does have another halfling with the block. Ability and it looks like a lot of big bench here. And as I said before, the most dangerous halfling right there. The plus one in agility with the block. We have seen how well a throw teammate can get you in position to win games in the last bit. Underworld team was able to get that touchdown off of a non plus one in agility, man. And here he does have a plus one agility. Halfling and so if he sticks the landing as he should then he should be a whole lot better Halfling chef did not steal any rerolls and that's extremely unfortunate for the Halfling team because now he's only has one reroll to his name and the Necromancy team is going to continue to have three rerolls so that is a big one right there yeah puppy he totally whiffed totally whiffed right there now and so here the Necromancy team let's take a quick look at those guys does have the zombies with the 30 player. And this one here with the kick. This one block with the guard ability. White also with block and guard. And the flesh golems. Both of them at level 1 as you can see here. And then the white with the guard and a mighty blow. And the staple here for the necromancy. Scene. The two werewolves. This one plus 1 in strength. With that mighty blow. With claw. And then the other werewolf. Plus 1 agility. Blodge with that tackle ability. And also the mighty blow with the claw up. up. Uh, inherent with them and then the plus one in straight main ball carrier with fend and the sidestep with the blodge and then the level one ghoul also to come in two zombies from the bench so this 
should be a pretty good one here. Let's take away the false skills as we are about to get underway with the second match. Lots more Champions Cup guys to come, so if you guys are just now joining me, welcome. Definitely good to see you guys. <laughs> Wayne, it's nice to see you, my friend. Halflings will plow through those unlucky undead team with ease. Yeah, you're right about that. I'm a little bit surprised to not see Zara, my girl Slayer, on the pitch. But I suppose if you can afford Morgan Thorg, then I guess why not take him? But still, I feel like I win more games with Zara on the pitch and instead of Morgan Thorg. But it's just one of those things, right? I mean, you get Zara, and you're so tempted to use that stab ability. You do get the plus one with the stabs against the Snickermanty team, so it just makes it to where you think, oh, I'm gonna go stab it, stab it, but it may not always be the best idea to get those stabs off, but still, Morgan Thorg, always a huge presence, and if you can really get going, it is no stopping that man. This is, that is the reason why Morgan Thorg is re highly well regarded in the star playerness. That's right. Holly Necro team, or do you mean holy? Or am I just reading that wrong? <laughs> yes, indeed. Necromate team will look at the ball, but the ball is going to be looking like he's landing short and hopefully go backwards, and it does. Man, he really looks out there because if it would have just scattered here, then the Necromate team would have an extremely difficult time getting the ball away from marked, marked up by two trees there. So luckily, the scatter goes out of bounds there and was able to get that touch back here to the main ball carrier so whew, Necroman team dodges a bit of a bullet there could have went horrible for him but you know it's just a one in eight chance of the scatter going this way could have been you know just as easily you know about a one in three chance of going this way and then uh, and, and another one in three chance of going this way which it did but still did kind of dodge a little bit of a bullet there but no worse for wear. Necromant team going to move along the right side and not going to waste any time. Pierce is going to just go and uh, get in position to score. I don't blame him right here. Just circumvent the half of the team as you can right now. Don't let them have any chances. And uh, hopefully get a whole bunch of injuries there. As you see there, going to use that werewolf. The only guy there with tackle on his, on his side. So going to have to depend on a lot more three die blocks and defender down dices to get down this halfling team. Luckily, though, lots of halflings do not have blocks, so with that block ability, might be okay there. Or get the both down die and take the turnover and still continue to do some damage. Death injury there by the Flesh Golem, and that is tremendous. When you're going to take that both down die, get a little bit 1 and 9 there, but not a big deal when you can get the both down die and you can de get the death injury to boot. So, starting off strong, Flesh Golem going to take that. Gonna take that 2 SPP and bank it up. Eeyore definitely needed that one for sure. I'll tell you what. Level 1 Flesh Gal. Not so fun. I'll tell you what. Look at that. He's got 2 Eeyores on the pitch there. So what a big one here. One and a half lanes going out. But hey, it's just a halfling. They are supposed to die here. So a little bit unfortunate though. That is an MVP on him. But still... No halfling bloats here. He's gonna go out and die, and then uh, the other halflings are probably just gonna come in. So not too big of a deal, but still, always a little bit of a loss on the onset. Definitely don't want to get that those uh, injuries out too early by the other side and let them have the numbers advantage after a while, right? I mean, you always want to keep as many halflings as you possibly can, but it is what it is, right? That is what they're for, and. Uh, that's what they're going to be. <laughs> oh, you almost thought it was the Flesh Gom that died there, Tra Tra Travica? Yeah, I mean, it almost looked like it, but upon closer inspection, it is the Halfling. <laughs> going out with a death injury. Nectar Man team. Looks like he's going to be scoring it fairly quickly here against his Halfling team. We'll see if that works out for him. I don't know if I would do that if I was Nectar Man team. Try to hold this for as long as I possibly can and then score it, but... I suppose, as I've said before, sometimes just going up one to nothing and getting the jitters out is also a really good idea. One die blitz here, and they're gonna try to get the blitz combo here, and uh, gonna get the two die block now with a guard here, so we'll be able to push the Morgan Thor into better hitting position, I suppose. 
And uh, I think that might be the play right there. Push Morgador into a spot where he gets a whole bunch of assists there. And hopefully get him down. It looks like he does. Defender down die. Morgador, he's going to go down with a big injury. Oh, man. And he can't use the Apothecary on the star players. And that is a big one right there. Necromantic team. Honey Cricket showing why he's in the Champions Cup right there. Does get the push combo. Gets him into a spot where this... Plus one in strength, Werewolf was able to use that claw to the max and was able to break armor and was able to take out the big man himself, Wizard. Gonna get used by the Halfling team and that's a great spot to use that right there. Halfling team easily gonna be able to follow up and possibly scoop that ball up after the Wizard usage here. And uh, unfortunately though, gonna have to play the rest of the offensive series without Morgan Thorg. And that might be a big miss here, especially against the Necromantic team, where you really need Morgathor with that sick strength to just pound, pound and ground the other side. Actually loses agility, but that's okay. Star player, Halfling, gonna flub that pickup, but that's why we got rerolls, my friends. And uh, gonna get the ball pickup, and uh, should be okay now. Tree, gonna get that blitz, gonna try to take out the... Werewolf quite possibly going to be the one with the tackle. I, I can't blame him here, but no, it's going to be the one with the plus one in strength. But unfortunately, it's just going to be a push here. Not going to step through because that would just lend too many assists to that tree and quite possibly take him out. So don't want to risk it here. Halfling does have the ball now, though. So that is great. In the words of Tony the Tiger, that is great. <laughs> yep, looks like Morgan Thor did get paid and got out. <laughs> oh man, was that four hundred and sixty thousand for him? I don't even, I don't even remember how much he costs at this point. But he's quite expensive. But he does have the Nuffle Altar, so fifty k less makes him a little bit more viable to pick up. But man, it's still quite a hefty cost to pick him up. Werewolf's gonna try to get that blitz here and uh, gonna get the gonna end up getting a three die block here and he will get the defender down die and he will be able to get the halfling with the block ability down so that is pretty nice and he'll hopefully be able to come around the backside it appears that is the play right there and touch up that ball carrier and threaten them up with the tackle werewolf on the backside so gonna make things a lot more uncomfortable if he wants to dodge away, that's just a 3 plus dodge, but won't be having the dodge ability. Yes, he's going to be able to move away right there. And uh, getting right next to the trees. No, he doesn't. Maybe thought about throwing, getting thrown right there, but in the end, thought twice about it. Thinking about just trying to get the cage right back up. And uh, going to be able to just square it away quite easily here and get the other halfling on the bottom right side. A little bit of risk there, but this is a risk nonetheless. And these are the things you gotta do in Blood Bowl. Just need to take those risks whenever given to you, and hopefully be able to win the game. And I mean, inherently, when you play a tier three team, you really just gotta take those risks, and hopefully be able to take those wins right there and off. Necromantic team needs to stop this halfling though from making it down to the other end of the pitch here and halflings are doing everything he can putting getting staying around these trees getting a lot of protection so it's going to make it very difficult for this necromantic team to do anything possibly going to see a blitz here on the halfling by the werewolf right there so hopefully be able to take him down and then be able to touch up the ball carrier once again and make it a whole lot more uncomfortable in there right there nice Defender stumbles with the tackle. We'll be able to take it down. We'll be able to also break his armor and get that stun. And should be able to get another zombie to touch that ball carrier up and make things a whole lot more uncomfortable here. And he's totally doing it there. And gonna get the werewolf around the backside here and come around the front. And the ghoul and also the white is gonna be standing sentinel here in the backfield just in case there might be a throw teammate. And it might be coming a bit more and more close tree man here Horatio he's 
He's not being touched up by anyone, and so a throw might be incoming pretty soon if he's not going to be able to get the guys out here, and he's not going to be able to, so it looks like he will be picking them up. We'll get that strong arm throw, but oh, he won't be able to stick the landing right there. No more rerolls left, and so can't reroll the landing, and unfortunately, it's going to fall flat on his face. And when you try to stick the landing, it's just an agility check there. So a 4 plus landing and not going to stick it there. But boy, what a difference that would have made if the halfling would have been able to stick that landing. What what a big difference that would have been. And he would have been able to just walk in and do the two GFIs and hopefully be able to get that score straight on afterwards. But that's just it, right? Tier 3 team, halflings, you kind of have to take these risks whenever presents it. And with the Necromantic team putting on so much pressure, he almost had to do that. And uh, it was... I guess that's okay though. Now the Halfling teams are pretty much back to defense and was able to stop her up the Necromantic team but did use the Wizard there. So the Wizard being blown, no Morgadorg. He is starting and st steadily starting to run out of weapons here. Still has Deep Root Strong Branch though. So that's a thing but... Halflings are going to be a little bit more and more on the back foot, but it looks like that flood pickup won't be able to move that ball up, and the zombie actually ends up with the ball, so he might actually have to end up doing a handoff here, and uh, sure, he, he could do the handoff, but if he flubs that handoff catch, then he's going to have to use another reroll. Only two left here for the Negromatic team for four more turns left. Actually, three more turns left, so... Watch out, turn 6, and this zombie is going to have to hand it off to that ghoul and going to have to try to make that touchdown within 3, so does the Necromantic team have enough time to make it there? That's the question here, so we'll see though, turn 6 now, zombie, he's going to have to hand it off, maybe hand it off to the werewolf, hell, it's going to be a 3 plus handoff no matter which way you slice it, so might as well give it to the guy who can race down the field and... Uh, Get that ball in a great spot, even no halflings right there. So this might actually be the play here. Zombie to the handoff on the werewolf, then going to be skittering here to this top left side and easily going to get a screen up as well. Trees already rooted, so not many halflings left that could stop this. And at this point, only the only thing now between the Necromantic team and the touchdown area is going to be Nuffle. Quite honestly, but it looks like he will get the handoff here to the other ghoul. I suppose he wants to get that ghoul the 3 SPP necessary for level 2. Why not? Does get it to him. Two more turns left. He's in range, so he's got 7 movement allowance. And this is going to be okay. Defective halflings. It's still breathing. <laughs> How to lose his halflings. Yeah, I hear that, king. And oh, right there. That's how you lose... Get that 1 and 36 on that block and uh, fall down to the might of the flesh gums. And with that, this is going to be an almost too easy of a touchdown coming up. Necromantic team spending just about everything to, st to stop her up the first time around. And that, my friends, is going to be too bad. But, you know, status quo, right? You know, if you're playing the Halfling team, you still need to keep your head together still need to keep that head into the game because I'm sure the Necromantic team is going to score it but man it's just one to nothing and it was the Necromantic team's possession half so not a big deal I say so needs to keep together keep those three trees alive still has a nice deep halfling bench there so as long as he gets his KO guys back should be okay and hell, he's got a 4 bench right there, so we'll cover the 4 KO guys right there. So even if all the KOs continue to stay out, then it's just going to be down 2 halflings. And that's not such a big deal. But I do believe 50% chance of getting your KO guys back. So numbers-wise, he should get back at least 2 of his KO personnel. And then with the 4 guys, should be able to cover all the losses there. And should be able to actually have his full complement for the next bit. So... Halfling team should be okay. And then here's the Necromancy team. Gonna move that werewolf for no reason whatsoever. Possibly was thinking about... Maybe, I don't know. Handing off, or I don't even know what he was doing with that werewolf. But nonetheless, 
realizes that his turn 8 does score it there by the ghoul and he will go 1 to nothing after being almost scored on himself. Halfling team darn near pulls it off but unlike the underworld team does not stick the landing and not able to move away and get that nice and easy throw teammate touchdown but he's not out of the woods yet. Necromancer team still needs to guard against the throw teammate. Definitely what you want to do is put you guys right there so that uh, not only does he have a chance of getting into your own tackle zones, but also he, when you do the throw, teammate has a possibility of hitting your own guys and stopping the one move touchdown. So that's kind of what you want to do is actually get you guys right about right here so that when he gets thrown, then we'll have a huge possibility or not a huge possibility, but a small possibility of him hitting your guy and that ends all the throw teammate hopes right then and there. Plus one agility man will be lined up and as I said before, it is agility check. So just a three plus on the landing, a whole lot easier to do with a plus one in agility man. I tell you what. And it's going to line up right there and... Uh, after the nice big hit right here he actually should put deep boot strong bench right here so that he can get the both down die if need be so that he can free up this guy right there in fact he should probably just line up to the left right there to to make sure that this halfling is going to get thrown or going to get the ball without needing to do it against any tackle zones hey what's going on calcium cast oh yeah you ready for the cross platform tournament calcium cast representing the playstation group how do you how do you feel about your chances for the cross-platform tournament i have to say i like the pc roster a lot but that's only because i don't know any of the people on the ps4 or even the xbox side so i mean i'm a little bit biased at this point oh yeah i'm ready i'm ready if you're ready Deep Root Strong Brand's gonna make his presence known. Could get that hit off, and now another hit in by the tree. Should get that three die block, and we'll be able to get him down with the defender down die, so no need to worry about tackle zones. Should be able to get that pickup roll. Needs to get all this without a re roll. So here's the handoff, a three plus handoff right here. He's getting a whole bunch of sixes, and then he gets the one on the catch roll. Hopefully, maybe just get it back on him and. Might be for the better, but unfortunately not going to get any of that stuff. And that, my friends, is how awfully difficult a throw teammate is when you don't have a reroll. You're going to murder whoever you play. <laughs> That's the play right there, huh? First game, just, uh, just take him out. Make him pay. Doesn't matter if I lose as long as he loses his lives. Oh, and Halfling Chef is going to whiff yet again. Only just going to get one reroll there on the steal. So, Halfling team can't catch a break at this point. Necromancy team is looking pretty darn good, though. It is the Halfling team's possession half. And so, should be able to maybe get the game tied up. Going to be out Morgan Thorg, But, again, it's one of those things where you don't always see Morgan Thorg on the pitch for you. So... Not a tremendous deal, but still, Morgan Thor getting out there is a big loss for this halfling team. Well, I'll tell you what, Calcium Cast, even though I want, I really want some good games and I really want it to be close between all of the teams, but I think in the end, PC should be able to just dominate there. I mean, I mean we got so many good players, but I mean, again, I just don't know how good the Xbox or the PlayStation team are, so... I'm just going by biasness at this point. <laughs> I'm absolutely biased. I, I, I'm not going to be ashamed to admit it. <laughs> As the halfling team lines up, like, let me guys tell you. Let, let me tell you guys about the cross-platform tournament. It's going to be Xbox, PlayStation, P, PC players, five on each team, and they're going to play one game each against each other and whoever gets the most wins is basically going to win the whole thing. So uh, right there guys, each win for each team really counts on all sides of the ball. And so it's not just about winning that day, it's about just winning in general. So yes, PCs are the favorites as Calcium Cast, but the consoles may have a shock or two. 
they may have something in the bag. All right, I like that. Uh, well, you know, I, again, I really hope that it's a whole, whole lot more closer and the PC guys don't just exactly run away with it because that will just make a whole lot more of a dramatic finish. That's for sure. I believe the Xbox people are playing the first two weeks there and then just needs to wait out the third week. Just going to have to bite their nails as they wait the ending, right? No, it's a PC... No, no, it's a PlayStation plays the, for the first two weeks. So let me, wait, wait, it's, it's, it's PC versus PlayStation in the first week, and then Xbox versus PlayStation, and then Xbox versus PC by the end. And so we'll see how that all is going to work out. And, uh, I, and I actually made out brackets there, Cassian Cats. I don't know if you've seen the brackets that I have created for the, uh, for the cross-platform tournament, but yes, I mean, that right there, my friends, is going to be a really good one to watch. And I will be doing the cast just like I do for the Champions Cup. I know that a lot of it will be streamed live by a lot of the other players, but still, I'll be able to get the fast replays out to you guys so that you can all have the pleasure of seeing the cross-platform tournament. It's going to be really great, and it's actually the first time ever, so... It's going to be real fun to see. Oh, big injury there in the halfling here. And Werewolf with that tackle. Actually, no tackle. That's actually the guy without the tackle. Just got the defender down there. With the mighty blow, we'll be able to get down a halfling. And we'll be able to spring the werewolf coming around the right side. So, hopefully the halflings will be able to get the GFIs necessary. Oh, to be a little bit more safe with it. Going to have to reroll that. And if he gets snuffled... Oh, he doesn't get nuffled, and he's going to be okay. Trees now need to clear things out, but man, he was just so close to getting nuffled just then and there. You're excited about me streaming the console players as well? Oh, thank you for that, Cassium Cast. That's a huge compliment coming from you, my friend. So, yes, I can't wait to get that out and be able to just cast everyone that's going to definitely be a real treat and also kind of get to know some of the better players for the console players and give them a little bit more exposure here on the Blood Bowl scene so I mean yeah definitely I, I have I, you know I normally at least get what 300 views on the video within the first week and so I mean they're definitely going to get a lot of exposure from just playing and being on my channel so that's the nice thing about it yeah. Big old turnover there. The halfling's not going to be able to get his guys out of danger, but that's okay. No big injury. Going to get caused by the miss dodge. So the Necromantic team going to continue to play a little bit away from those trees. Don't want to get bowled over by the tree and front line and get pushed back. And <laughs> that would be quite bad if he did. So needs to stay out of the grasp here and stay back for the time being and wait for his opportune moment to pounce on the halfling I think the the best play right now to be is just get his werewolf with the tackle and get a little support for him as he tries to take down some of the side cage not the side cage but the corners here that's gonna be held up here the cage is held up by this halfling team and then take those guys out get the injuries off as well put another guy there in there and make it a whole lot more uncomfortable to deal with and there you go, gonna get that hit. We'll be able to get the KO. We'll be able to take out the sidestepping, annoying halfling to boot. So, nice one there. Werewolves are doing their jobs. Not just the one with tackle, but also the one with plus one strength with that mighty blow ability. So, both the werewolves are absolutely doing their jobs and taking out one by one. And oh, there we go. Both down die. Not gonna come good for the tree man, and it's actually gonna come out better for the werewolf. Oh no, and that is a big loss here for the halfling team. Tree man goes down, and that is a huge miss. Should be able to get down another one of the trees and might actually be able to get a blitz on the ball carrier, and it's gonna possibly come by the tackle werewolf. So we'll see how this is going to pan out. I don't know if he's going to be able to get enough assist there. One, two, three. Uh, it's going to be tough. Well, actually, he'll have at least a one die 
block on him. Yeah, it looks like it's going to be a one die block with block. So I think that's going to be the play here. So the blitz by the flesh count gets the boat down. And unfortunately, going to get a little bit nuffled there. But one in nine there with that block die coming out. Actually, not really. Yeah, he did get one in nine there. But that's okay, though. The block is okay. That doesn't really affect the position too much because I don't think the halfling team can actually do much with the ball at this point except for just holding it at this point. And then once the Necromite team gets into the cage here, then we should see a throw teammate once again. I don't think the halfling team can walk it up by themselves at this point. So we're going to see another throw teammate pretty soon by the end of the game as long as he's able to hold on to the ball. But it, boy, with these missed blocks there, just a bunch of pushes. Does make this corner a little bit more open to attack. So uh, we'll see now. It does try to dodge away. And he's just, just trying to get his halfling out of the out of the side there. So he doesn't get surfed. And so misses the dodge right there on the 3+. Plus and a little bit unfortunate. But Necromant team, if, if he does poke his head into the... If he does poke his head into the cage, the halflings are definitely going to throw teammate. Because there's just nowhere to go at this point. There's nowhere else to go there's no other case to be reformed here or anything like that so I think the necromant team has to know this at this point and he has to get the blitz on the back field here and just stick his nose in there if anything get a two die block on the tree and he does does get the down die oh and it's a KO oh that's horrible because that opens up the spot right here for the wolf to actually walk into or maybe even the white or anybody, but it looks like he's not gonna walk anyone in there. There you go, throw teammate. That is enough. He will get the throw teammate, but unfortunately, not gonna get anything with the pass. Deep root strong branch is gonna flub that pass and the landing, no good as well. And the guy with the ball is also gonna suffer the big injury. Throw teammate did try to reroll, got the one yet again on that throw teammate. And was not able to get anywhere with it. Does fumble it. Does fumble the pass. And with, just like any fumble, he does drop it. And does give a chance at the landing. And uh, was not able to get anything more from it. So deep through strong badge. As I said before, I have not seen any of these replays. It's just it's just my blood bowl knowledge, guys. But as I said before, as soon as the Necroman team was able to stick anything into the faces of this cage... Then the throw teammate was 100% coming out in there. Unfortunately, throw teammate not successful. Just a bunch of onesies on the throw and not going to get anything out of it as well. And that's extremely unfortunate. Not going to get any magic here. Underworld team got the magic, but the halfling team, one by one, has gone out. One by one is going out. Puppy! What are you putting into chat there? <laughs> are you putting in the time of how long I've been casting? Well, I've been casting. This is the second game I've casted, so we are in we are in 1 hour and a half time. So, that's how long I've been casting for. This is the second game. We have a third and fourth game coming up. We're going to see Chaos Dwarf team taking on the Nurgle team, I believe. I think it's Nurgle. Yes, it is Nurgle team. So, Christopher versus Siren coming up after this. And then, the Basa taking on Mankis. Orc versus... The... What is it? Orc versus... I gotta take a look. Wood Elf team of Mankis. So, those two games coming up next. Better watch out for that, guys. And, uh, if there's gonna be any more games that have just finished, then I may just do that as well, if time permits. But I think we're gonna have a lot of time, because none of these games are going into overtime. And so, as long as games are not going into overtime, then I'll actually have a little bit extra time to do some more games that may have just finished in Saturday. So, we'll see about that. Mega Team does get the ball now with the easy pickup from the Ghoul. And he's looking like he's going to score it yet again with it. So, pretty nice stuff there. I should probably put a time thing so that people can check that. Hey, puppy. Hey, hey, hey. How long, that, how long has VG been online? Uh, that, that might actually be a good thing to put up, I suppose. <laughs> a lot of people kind of ask that. How long have you been casting for? What game is this? How many games have you casted? So that actually might be a good thing to do. Note to self. Put time online. 
for everyone to see. Halflings are gonna try some crazy maneuvers, but unfortunately, three plus dodges not gonna be the thing to try to get to the ball and not gonna be able to get to that werewolf. And uh, turn 15 here just needs to hold it for one more turn with Deep Root Strong Branch, quite possibly gonna get fouled yet again. And hopefully, just get a stun or something like that will pretty much stop her up any hope that the halflings may have had. By the end, defender down die on the three die blocks. Pretty clutch right there. Now all the halflings are down. And uh, that is pretty much the end of the halfling run. Diam Lord gonna fall short again, but I think this was pretty much just a joke team. Anyways, just trying to have a little fun with halflings after winning last season's championship with the Chaos Dwarf team. And uh Darn near going to the quarterfinals with the Halfling team, so pretty good stuff, but instead it is going to be the Necromag team of Horny Cricket is going to get through. Looks like he did try to foul anyways. Does pick up the Deep Root Strong Bench, and uh, just going to get the Blitz here in the Werewolf to die block here, and unfortunately though, both of them with the block will end all aggression, and we should see the easy touchdown. Honey Cricket is the winner! And this one, my friends, I did get it right on my prediction. Hey, hey! I'll take it, guys! In the end, Halflings just could not catch any break whatsoever. Big breaks on the trees, big breaks on Morgenthor, Claw, Mighty Blow working out quite well for the werewolves, and uh, due to those reasons, was able to just dominate. No luck coming out for any of the throw teammates for the Halfling team and that right there is the biggest reason why Halfling teams could not maneuver past the Necromantic team. So with that 2 to 1, actually 2 to nothing, and uh, we'll be facing off against an Underworld team. So Horny Cricket actually having a nice easy time of it. Played against the Amazon team, played against a Halfling team, and now it's going to play against the Underworld team, but maybe not so easy. Underworld team though, Loads of threats you have to worry about, and he himself has a bunch of guys with claws. So, Underworld versus Necromancy team, that's going to be a really good game right there. Coming up next, though, Nurgles taking on the Chaos Dwarf team. Siren versus Crucifer once again. What a big matchup there, and that is going to be a really good one to see. Just a second, though. Whew, gonna take a real quick drink break again real quick guys if you haven't already and you like what you see Please hit that follow button definitely helps me out in the long run and continues to get all the blood bowl action out from the champions cup and coming up next is gonna be the What is it the cross platform tournament coming up? So I'll show you guys the brackets afterwards For that but man a whole bunch of great players from all the consoles on PC we got Ducky on PC, we got Jimmy Fantastic, Mercy Flush, Bleeding Hippie, and Moldrips to, to represent the PC crowd. And uh, on the PlayStation, I believe we have Bernie Buffin, and we have Calcium Cast, we got Drick, we got all kinds of guys out there, so watch out for that. We're going to be doing the cross-platform, the cross-platform cup coming up pretty soon there, the tournament's right there, X-Plat Cup. Right there, Team Xbox taking on Team PC in the first round, Team PlayStation taking on Team Xbox in the second round, and the third round, Team PC against PlayStation, where each win counts towards the, the absolute total, and uh, whoever gets the most wins will win the console tournament wars here, the cross-platform cup, so watch out for that in the next bit. But again, I'm going to take a quick break, just a minute guys, a quick minute while I just wet my whistle and we are going to be continuing on the Cabal Vision Champions Cup 11 with the Nurgles versus Chaos Dwarf team. Don't you guys go away. I'll be right back again. Hit that follow button and if you guys are watching after the fact here, please hit that subscribe on YouTube as well and like my videos and you'll get to see loads more Blood Bowl, more strategy and role playing games as well. Not just Blood Bowl, but all kinds of other stuff as well. So with that, I'll be right back. 